All right, here we go. So what we're going to talk about today is a brand, uh, well, it's going to be a little bit of a different demo on, um, on uh, UV unwrapping. But I think this is going to make things a little simpler. And I'm also going to introduce another concept, and that is exporting the UV mesh before you actually add the texture so that you can do some kind of custom stuff. Um, and I'm going to show you exactly what I mean in just a second. So we're just going to use a cube. Um, and I think that this works out well because the cube um, uh, is an easy thing to UV unwrap. And I think that it also illustrates the concept of UV unwrapping a little bit simpler than a more complicated object, say like, I don't know, chair. <laughs> so we're going to, we're going to uh, just do this really easily. So <clears throat> if I uh, tab in here and I go and select my edges, here's what's interesting, if you think about making a cube out of paper, that's really what you want to do, is you want to think about, okay, if I were to take a flat piece of paper and I were to make a cube, how would I do that? And then has anybody ever done that? You know, you got a little craft kit or something like that, and you had to make a cube out of paper and had little tabs. What shape was it in? A T, right. It, it looks like a T. So here's kind of how it has to work. So... <clears throat> If I were to, uh, actually, actually, let me just illustrate this by, by um, creating a, a new object. So I'm going to shift A. Here's a plane. And if I wanted to, um, to illustrate this, this is what it would look like if you were to unwrap a cube. Okay? And so you can see it's got all six sides on it. And then I could fold this down. So let's do it. Now let me make the cube so that you guys can see exactly what happens. So I'm going to bring this, I'm going to bring it See? Pretty cool, huh? Now if I take all these, now I have a cube. Do you see how that works? Okay, how, how basically I took the T shape and I brought it in and I made a cube. So that's essentially what we're doing. When we're UV unwrapping, it's essentially like taking <coughs> your object and flattening it. You're doing the reverse, really. You've built a 3G, 3D object and you're unwrapping it in a, in a way that you're going to try to um, make it flat. Um, so let's get out of here and I'm going to delete this object. Uh, whoops, I thought I tabbed out of there. Okay, X, delete. So, go back to my cube here. And I right, -click, oh, right click on it. And I'm going to tab in. <coughs> and so now, when I'm setting my seams, my seams are going to be the exact same. So, now I'm going to do it a little differently than I did before because I want my seams to be on the bottom, theoretically, not the top. So, there. There, like that like that, and like that. And so what that's going to do is it's going to flatten it out. So I go um, Control E, and I'm going to mark my seams. Boom. Oops, and I'm, I'm <laughs> no, no, I did that right. I did that right. So now, if I go, it's hard. It's really hard to, to think of this um, sometimes. So now if I go here, um, and I unwrap, The mesh. Oops, I need to select all. My bad. Try this again. UV unwrap. Unwrap. You can see that now over here it looks just like a T. So 
I'm going to take this, I'm going to hit grab, I'm going to move it into the middle. Okay, this is going to help. Now, here's the really cool part. This is what's really fun. So let me save this really quickly. I'm just going to save it to my, uh, let's see here, where am I? Demo Files Blender. Okay, I'm going to call this Cube Unwrap here. And actually, let's make, it a, let's make a new directory for that too. I can't spell. <clears throat> um, there we go. So now I've saved it. Now here's what's really cool. Down here at the bottom, <clears throat> there is a, 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 a thing where you can click on the UV menu and it says export UV layout. This is really awesome. So I'm going to click export UV layout and I'm just going to put it in the same folder and it says cube unwrap.png. So now I'm going to export that layout and I'm done. So now I'm going to minimize Blender here. Now I'm going to go and I'm going to get that uh, unwrap, ex that exported file. So demo files, Blender, UV unwrap. So here's my cube U U unwrap uh, PNG. I'm going to right click and I'm going to open it with Photoshop. I don't know why Photoshop's not up there. <clears throat> now it's going to launch Photoshop. Now for some people Photoshop might be a really uh, a new beast, but that's okay. This is actually pretty simple. And so now you can see that I've got this, um, I've got the UV unwrap as a series of outlines. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to give each one of my sides a different texture. So that, and, we, and you can see this happen. So now I'm going to go um, to the internet really quickly, and I'm going to go a steel texture. Okay, so I'll just <clears throat> grab one of these. Some of these are really high resolution. They don't have to be um, necessarily, especially for video game stuff. Uh, they don't have to be all that. Oh, that's a good one right there. So let's open that image. You can make that. That's a typical steel texture. You can make that in Photoshop. Uh, really quickly. So I'm just going to save the image and I'm going to go back and put it in here. And I'm going to go put it in exactly the same folder as all the others. So there's my metal steel texture. Save. Now let's do a wood texture. Okay. Uh, that one's really so. A lot of these are really high resolution. That's cool, but for right now, I don't need to worry about that. So we save image, wood texture, save. Uh, let's see here. How about um, gravel or stone? Let's do stone. I'll just. I won't do a ton of them. So um, there, that one works. Do that and save this one. I say we'll just do three because I don't want to drag this out too much. Okay, so now I've got these other images and they're all in here. So I'm going to take and I'm going to open this again, open with Adobe Photoshop, and it's going to come in here. And I can select all or Command A, and I can edit copy, and then I'm just going to close this and I'm going to say edit paste, and there it is, and it comes right in over top of the UV mesh. And so if I drag that underneath, you can kind of see where your texture is going to be. So now I'm just going to go edit, transform, and scale. And I'm going to hold the shift key down to kind of give it a, a, a good, uh, a, you know, a good, um, uh, so that it, hold the shift key down so it stays proportional. Um, so you don't squish the texture because sometimes that can look really weird and it doesn't have to completely fill it It can go beyond the edges here in this case. So that's good. I go up hit the check mark I complete the transformation nice and simple. Let's go back and open our stone So we're going to open with Adobe Photoshop Select all so that's control a then control C close it control V I think I said command in the previous one. That's because I'm 
working against 20 years of training of using Macs. Now that I'm on PCs, I just keep saying command. Sorry. So then we just go scale again. And we're going to just kind of put this right up in here. Now here, in the middle one, could be a little different because I don't want any overlap there. Okay. <clears throat> so what I do here is going to be really important. I can use the eraser tool and erase it, but I'm lazy and I'm just going to put another texture on top. Okay. So then we'll go and get the, um, the wood texture here and I'm going to um, open with Photoshop, select all, copy, close, and paste. Use the move tool, move it around, get it set up there, edit, transform, scale, kind of bring it down a little bit to the size that I want. Now, see it's snapping all around here, so I'm going to go to view and turn snapping off so that I can line it up the way I want to. Okay, just like that. Double click or hit the check mark, and we're good. Now, <clears throat> All that to say, and I'm just going to duplicate these layers and we're just going to place them all around the other sides here. So, um, actually, let's take this layer. I'm going to move this down here. I'm going to do that. Uh, and then I'm going to take our wood texture and I'm going to duplicate it. So I've got another copy of that. And I'm going to move it over here. And I'll duplicate it again. And I'll move it here. And then I'll duplicate it one more time. And put it right there. Now, so now I've got all these different textures here. And what I'm going to do is just make sure that they are no gaps. So I'm going to turn off this UV map layer that I have here. And just kind of nudge them until there's no big gaps and now I'm going to save this I'm just gonna save and it's going to be my UV unwrap and I'm just gonna call this UV texture dot Photoshop PSD okay and it's gonna save now we can't put a Photoshop it's not good to put a Photoshop on in blender so what we need to do is we need to save it again as a PNG but I wanted to save all my layers first okay so PNGs don't have layers so I save my Photoshop file so I can go back to it and work on it later, um, you know, modify it, whatever. But now I'm going to click Save As, and I'm going to say UV Texture, and then I'm going to put it as a PNG and click Save. And now it's going to ask me, do I want compression? None. No interlacing. That's for video work. And click OK. Now I'm going to close Photoshop, and you can see I've got a lot of files in here. And so what I can, what I like to do sometimes is I'll, is I'll make a new folder, and I'll just, I'll just say um, texture work files. But I like to keep everything in the same folder with my Blender file, just so that I've got it. So then I'll just take the Photoshop file and all the texture files that I downloaded off the internet there, and I'll just take those and I'll keep those. Oh, and the unwrapped PNG file there. So now all I've got is my texture file. You'll notice that I also didn't save the texture file with the little cross shape over top of it because I don't want that there. I just want these textures. They should line up perfectly now. So now I'm going to go back to Blender here. I'm going to add my textures just like we normally do. So I'm going to go over here. I'm going to, I've got a material. And I've got a texture, so I'm going to go and set it up as my image, and I'm going to open my UV texture that I've got here, and then I'm going to go into UV editing mode, and I should be able to select it from here, and look, it lines up perfectly, just like that. So the plan, the mapping that I did, the plan works, and so now I go over here, Set it to rendered. Oops. Hey, what's wrong? It looks like it should work perfectly.
Well, it looks like it works in textured mode. That's very strange. <clears throat> anyway, I'm going to have to figure out why it's doing two different things. But essentially, it's, um, you've got your map, and now you can choose where, what you want certain vertices to show by creating a custom texture in Photoshop. So this is all really important because when we do characters for video games or anything like that, and you want to do a complex mesh that has a lot of different textures on it, so let's say you've got a character and you've got metal and then you've got, you know, fabric or chain mail or something like that and you want that all in the same mesh, that's a lot to ask for, really. But once you build your character, now what you can do is you can do your seams, unwrap the character before you even add a texture at all, export that as an image file so it flattens your 3D form into a flat image file, bring that into Photoshop and then you can copy and paste and put all your textures in there distort them, stretch them, squish them and I'll do, a, I'll do another demo on that once they get a little bit more irregular how that can work out but you know for, the, for simplicity's sake we use the uh, uh, cube here but you know you can deform them and squish them and stretch them and, and distort them and do perspective distorts and all sorts of stuff to make everything look right but once you bring it back in with the same mesh, now look at that. It, it matches the sides and the mesh perfectly. And I was able to give each side a different texture, essentially, so that it worked. Now, I'm not quite sure why it's not rendering. I think that that probably has to do with... Um, so if I just go back to uh, default here. <coughs> Single image. Projection flat. Whoops. Now it's working. How weird is that? So I just had to delete the texture and add it again. That's a little strange, but that's okay. I don't know why it did that, but it did. So if I turn my environmental lighting on here, you know, to something a little bit more natural, like say 0.4 or something like that, so I still see shadows, you can see how I've got a different texture on all four, or all six, all four sides on all six sides, okay, and how I was able to plan that out using the UV export that you can do in the UV mapping uh, uh, window there. So that's a really cool thing to do and also hopefully this illustrates the process of UV, UV mapping uh, a little bit easier because it's just a simple cube and so you can see how it flattens it out. Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah? Alright, so that's going to be coming up very soon. We're going to need to do that.